Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Unless you're sitting in complete darkness, I'd like for you to do me a favor. Take a look around the room you're in and notice a spot on the wall. Then draw a line out of your eyes towards that spot and then follow it on the angle that it would take towards the light source in your room. Congratulations! You've just done the same thing that happens in ray tracing, a graphics rendering technique that's been in the tech news quite a bit lately on the heels of the launch of Nvidia's Turing family of GPUs, which tout real-time ray tracing as a way to get better looking games. But what exactly is ray tracing? Well, to understand ray tracing, it helps to know why it's considered a step up from the traditional method by which games draw or render scenes onto your screen. Most games today use a technique called rasterization, where the game code will direct your GPU to draw a 3D scene with polygons. These two-dimensional shapes, usually triangles, make up most of the visual elements that you see. After the scene is drawn, it gets translated or rasterized into individual pixels, which are then processed by a shader, which affects colors, textures, and lighting effects on a per pixel basis to give you a fully rendered frame. Then you do this 30 or 60 times per second, depending who you ask, and you've got yourself a fully responsive video game to enjoy. But while rasterization has served us well for a long time, trying to approximate an image by translating 3D shapes onto a 2D screen and then using shaders to estimate what the lighting should be has inherent limitations because this method of rendering has a hard time tracking exactly how light should travel and bounce within a certain scene. Ray tracing does a much better job of this, and you've actually probably been enjoying it without knowing it for years if you've gone to any recent movie that features CGI effects. What made this possible in movies, though, is that big budget productions have the luxury of lots of money to render those effects on large server farms, a process that can take months and uses much more computationally intensive techniques with many bounces for each photons and a huge number of light rays coming from each source. Just check out this still life created with a ray tracing program. You would be forgiven for thinking that it is a real photograph at first glance. Okay, so ray tracing's amazing, right? Let's use it for everything. Well, not quite. The downside of ray tracing is the computational cost. And the average 20-something gaming at home doesn't have millions of dollars or a rendering server. And on top of that, games have to be rendered at at least 25 or so frames per second, not one frame per day, as has been the case in some Pixar films. So instead of tracking however many trillions of rays that come from each light source, consumer grade ray tracing lessens the computational load by instead tracing a path from a virtual camera that represents the user's eyes through a single pixel, then to whatever object is behind that pixel and finally back to the in-scene light source. For added realism, if whatever that ray bounced off of absorbs or diffuses the light, like a rough rock or a tree trunk, the ray tracing algorithm can take these additional rays of light into account as well so that any refraction effects or shadows are displayed accurately. And because lighting is such an important aspect of achieving a convincing 3D render, once this process is completed for each pixel, your GPU can throw out some insanely detailed images. Like any new GPU feature though, it'll come down to industry support. Now on the hardware side, given AMD's professional grade ray tracing solutions, we'll probably see both teams add support in the future. As for the game developers, well, there's no guarantee. So all we can really do is hope that you won't end up paying a premium for some feature that you'll never actually use. Like that time that you were planning to get ripped on your new Wii Fit. Speaking of things you'll actually use, check out Private Internet Access. Not only does Private Internet Access work on up to five devices at once, hiding your true IP address and allowing you to bypass geo restrictions and censorship by making you appear as though you are connecting from somewhere else, it also blocks unwanted connections to help prevent attacks, auto blocks all traffic if the VPN disconnects, it keeps your data out of the hands of advertisers and other snoops, and even includes MACE, PIA's built-in malware blocker.
PIA supports multiple VPN protocols and encryption levels, allowing you to dial in the exact level of protection you need. They've got apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, and a Chrome extension. And they've got over 3,000 servers in 28 countries with no user activity logs. So check them out at the link below. So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out our other videos. Don't forget to leave a comment with video suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to hit the bell. People be like, I didn't forget to hit the bell. I didn't want to. <laughs>